Today I'm going to show you how I 3D printed and finished an entire helmet using the Zortrax M300 3D printer. Zortrax contacted us and we agreed to do a project using their giant M300 3D printer. This thing has a pretty huge build volume, so we wanted to do a project that really used the entire thing. And another challenging thing to 3D print is a helmet. So we wanted to print an entire helmet all at once on a printer. Jamie and Rob were working on a Samus costume from Metroid for Emerald City Comic Con, and they wanted to 3D print the helmet. They really liked the 3D model made by JTM on Thingiverse. I'll link to that model down below. And I offered to help them with their project and print the helmet using the M300. Sortrex sent us the M300 printer and several rolls of different kinds of filament. I wanted to try their high impact polystyrene called Z-Hips. I've never printed with this type of filament, so this will be a great learning experience. First, I needed to get the 3D model ready for printing. I downloaded the Samus helmet that Jacob designed, but I didn't want to print the visor or the tubes. So I imported the OBJ file into MeshMixer, which is a free program that helps prepare and modify 3D models for 3D printing. The Separate Shells tool separates objects that aren't actually connected. The unwanted objects can be hidden, but I just deleted them. The helmet was exported as an STL and imported into Zortrax's Z-Suite Slicer. The model was slightly too big for the print bed at this orientation. Printing a helmet upside down would probably use less support material, but I watched Joel the 3D Printing Nerd's video on printing a Stormtrooper helmet on this printer. The Z-Hip supports looked like they were kind of fusing to the print surface and wouldn't release from the outside of the helmet, requiring quite a bit of extra cleanup. I wanted to have as clean of an exterior surface as possible. If the support material didn't remove cleanly from the inside of the helmet, that's totally fine. Rotating and tilting the helmet made it barely fit in the print area. The raft and support material was automatically generated. I didn't see a way to add my own raft and support manually, but I wanted to test out Z-Suite's automatic settings anyway. This is a lot of support material and a really long print time. I lowered the print quality to normal and used 0.29 layer thickness. The 0.19 layer thickness print said it would take over seven days but with a 0.29 layer thickness, it was four days and 20 hours. The Zortrax M300 print bed has the craziest adhesion that I've seen in person. There's little holes that the film is pushed into during the raft layers, and this raft did not budge. As the helmet started taking shape, something bad happened. It looked like the layers shifted over a little bit. I didn't cancel the print right away, and I waited to see if it happened again. And sure enough, it did. Sadly, this print attempt was a failure. I held in the control knob for five seconds to pause the print and then canceled the process. There's a connection on the back of the print bed that can be unplugged to take out the whole bed. This made removing the raft much easier. The printer came with a kit of supplies, but the bed scraper wasn't really thin enough to get under the raft. I used our own scraper that has been sanded down on the belt sander to create a thinner edge. Applying this much force can be dangerous. The scraper will stab free once it's broken through the print material. I made sure to keep my fingers and anything I cared about away from the path of the force. I can only guess at why the layer shifting happened, but it may have been that the giant helmet print was just too wide. It was right up against the edges of the print area with the generated raft, and maybe it was too big? This is my first time working with high impact polystyrene filament and it seems really sturdy. I thought I successfully removed the support under the helmet's chin, but then I realized the support tore away and left the top layer of support attached to the model. It looked like it was melted to the surface. Also, some areas of the white filament looked like they were burned. I'm not sure what happened there. I was afraid to try another almost five day helmet print, so I decided to break up the helmet into four parts. That way I could try a smaller print and see if it had layer skipping issues. It looks like I won't be printing a whole helmet in one go, but I still wanted to make a helmet, dang it. At least I'll get to show you another cool feature in Mesh Mixer. I used the plain cut tool to cut up my model into four pieces. Then I used separate shells again to split the pieces apart. The holes from the plain cuts were automatically repaired in Z-Suite. I only kept one side of the helmet since Z-Suite has its own mirror tool. 
All right, attempt number two was on its way and the print looked pretty great. There wasn't any layer shifting. In fact, I didn't see any for the rest of this project. There was part of the helmet that broke free from the supports and got mushed around a little bit. I didn't realize how much of an issue this would be until later. Thinking about it now, in Z Suite, I could have changed the size of the support by clicking on it and increasing the size. That may have helped the helmet stay attached to the supports. I switched to the gray hips filament roll for the last piece. Each part of the helmet did break away from the same thin support area. I tried a couple of different tools to remove the support. In some spots, this worked great, but in other areas, the supports were stuck to the surface. I also got some filament drooping. Maybe those areas needed more support? At least the crunchy bits were on the inside of the helmet, but that filament separation did create some holes in the print. In the future, I should totally just use gray filament. It's way easier to see on camera. With all the helmet pieces printed, I had to line them up and attach them together. I found that a piece of styrene sheet would adhere really well to hips filament with super glue, as long as everything got roughed up with sandpaper. These little styrene tabs were glued to one side and the fit was checked before attaching halves forever. After the tab areas were glued together, I filled in the seam with super glue, held the piece in place and used accelerant to speed up the cure time. The front halves of the helmet were also attached together. And remember those areas of the print that separated from the supports? They didn't line up anymore, so some body shopping needed to happen. I used markers to show where I needed to remove material and used my rotary tool to sand away the extra filament. If I sanded in one spot too long, the filament would start to melt, so I just had to keep the tool moving. At least these problem spots were on the bottom sides of the helmet, so it wouldn't be noticeable when I modified them to look nice. I cut more pieces of styrene sheet and used a heat gun to curve them to the helmet shape. This will save on body filler later. Then the mismatched connection was sanded down to meet the new shape. 100 grit sandpaper on my palm sander was used over the whole surface. This smoothed out the little facets of geometry that were in the 3D model and evened out all the seams. The inside of the helmet was coated in epoxy coat from Smooth On. This is a super thick epoxy that will provide a sturdy shell as well as fill in all the seams and holes in the print. We've had this bucket for a few years and there's some hardened chunks in the mix, but it still cures just fine. After brushing out the epoxy into a thin layer, it won't drip and stays in all the recessed areas. I was planning on using body filler to patch my styrene seams, but since I had some leftover epoxy, I tried scraping it into the seams and holes, then smoothed out the area with a popsicle stick. After the epoxy cured to a tacky hard state, I mixed up a second batch, this time adding some black tint. This way I could see where I was adding the material. The next day the epoxy was fully cured and it turned out great. I tried chipping off the material, but it seemed to bond to the plastic really well. With the inside of the helmet reinforced, I went back to sanding. The epoxy sands great, but it does kick up a fine dust, so I made sure to keep my dust mask on and a shop vac nearby. Another kind of epoxy, called XTC3D, got mixed up for the outside of the helmet. This epoxy cures faster and is also much less viscous, so it leaves a smoother finish. It does like to drip in pools, so I had to keep an eye on it as it cured. I spread out the epoxy as quickly as possible, since it will cure faster in a large volume. You could also dump the mix out into a wide tray while you're working, so it won't cure as fast as it would in a cup. I brushed out the recessed areas and kept an eye out for drips. This layer will help speed up the sanding process since the print lines get filled in and the epoxy is much easier to sand. This epoxy has an exothermic cure and XTC 3D cures pretty fast, so there's more heat in the leftover mixture. My cup got crazy hot, but the brushed out epoxy didn't get warm at all. I brushed on two coats of different gray tints. Oh, also, I wore my respirator and was in a well-ventilated area the entire time I was working with epoxy. This stuff doesn't stink that much, but the fumes are not good to breathe. A sanding drum on my rotary tool removed the epoxy drips that I missed. I took my palm sander outside so I wouldn't have to deal with all of that fine dust. I started with 100 grit and focused on bringing all the high spots down to the low spots. The epoxy is glossy, so the low spots were pretty easy to see. 
Some areas got sanded back down to the print filament, which was fine. To keep the nice curves, I tried to not linger in just one spot. I didn't want to sand a divot into one area. I marked where the really low spots were and mixed up some Evercoat body filler. I smoothed out the filler as best I could before it set up. It only has a few minutes of working time. The area around the filler was sanded down to even out the seams. I was having trouble seeing the areas that needed more filler, so it's time for some primer. Gray primer is like a magic wand for revealing all of my crimes. This helped me track down lumpy areas that needed some serious sanding with 200 grit sandpaper. I knew the area was smooth once all of the low spot primer was sanded away. There were a couple of tiny holes that I filled in with some spot putty. The putty is air dry and small amounts can be sanded after a few minutes. It was time to add the front tube things for the helmet, or at least figure out how to attach them for later. I like the look of this flexible shower arm replacement piece better than the 3D printed tubes. It looked like I would have enough tube for both sides if I cut it in half and kept some of the connection on either side, which I thought would look cool. I ended up using a hacksaw for this metal pipe. I felt like I had the most control with this tool, plus I wasn't sure what was inside the pipe. Turns out there's a rubber tube, a spring, and an outer coil. The connectors had a big chunk of plastic inside as well. Cutting through all the metal pieces did take quite a while. I decided to cut holes all the way through the helmet for these tubes. I always wear eye protection when using a rotary tool. The hips filament likes to fling everywhere. The tubes were test fit, but they won't be attached until after the helmet is painted. Speaking of paint, it was time for another round of primer. I went up to 400 grit and started wet sanding. Keeping the sandpaper and work area wet helps everything stay nice and smooth. Before the helmet was covered in red tacky paint, I had a few more pieces to figure out. The first was the front vents on the helmet. I removed those when I split the helmet into four pieces. I figured it would be annoying to line them back up later. If I 3D printed the vents now, they probably wouldn't fit after all of my epoxy work. So I traced out a pattern to cut out of styrene. I originally thought of using little styrene strips and heat form them into place, but the process turned out to be a pain. Instead, I kept the vents as one piece and just scored the vent lines in, and then carved in a channel in the back that will bend. This took a couple of tries. The thickness of the plastic made the pieces not fit quite right. I smoothed out the scored lines with a needle file, and then this piece was also ready for primer. The last piece to figure out was the visor. I folded some paper and traced out the visor shape, leaving room around the edges to attach the plastic later. This will be the template for tracing the visor out of plastic. Crown Fusion Red Gloss was used for the helmet. The first layer was lightly sprayed on, and after that setup, I added a few more heavy layers. This paint is more of an orangey red than a normal red, but I knew the costume was using the same red, so it would match. This always happens to me, but surprise, I was beginning to run out of time before the convention, so I hand brushed on the black recesses with acrylic paint. This took a few passes, but it looks pretty nice in the end. After I hand off this helmet, it's gonna get weathered to match the rest of the armor, so this is the cleanest the helmet will ever look. Sticking with Krylon Fusion, I added a few layers of clear gloss. All of these rattle cans have different application instructions and dry time, so I made sure to read them all carefully. I didn't go crazy heavy with the gloss. I was a bit worried it would start dripping, and I didn't have a lot of dry time left, but I think it came out pretty nice. It's really cool how the seams where I attached the four helmet pieces together are now completely gone. For attaching the tubes, I aligned them in place with the extra bits on the bottom touching each other. Then tacked the tubes in place using hot glue. For the rest of the attachment, I mixed up some JB Weld epoxy. The bits of hot glue kept the tubes from moving while the super strong epoxy cured. I did sand off the paint for the areas that were getting permanent glue, like around the tubes and the visor. The little vent on the front was sprayed with gloss black lacquer, then silver spray paint, and clear gloss. The connections were sanded and the vent was super glued in place. For wearing the helmet, I hot glued in chunks of upholstery foam. It's a pretty snug fit, but this foam can be snipped away with scissors or even torn out and readjusted until it fits the cosplayer. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the visor. It's just, I wanted to use Dayglow green acrylic and I didn't have any. 
On the way to deliver the helmet, we stopped at Tap Plastics and somehow ended up buying more than just the plastic for this project. In Rob and Jamie's garage, I mean cosplay lair, Bill helped me with a visor. He cut out the shape with a coping saw since we killed their Dremel like two seconds into cutting this acrylic. The visor has one bend right in the middle, so Bill heated the visor with a paper cover still attached and pressed the hot plastic over a hard edge. Then the beautiful day glow acrylic is revealed. Oh, it's so pretty. The convention was the next day, so why not try a technique that's new to us? Hope it works. Bill cleaned off the plastic surface with rubbing alcohol, then used Spaz Sticks Mirror Chrome to lightly mist the inside of the visor. From a distance, the inside of the visor is silver and the outside has this cool reflective effect. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can still see through the visor. This looks super cool and I want to do more tests with this method in the future. The visor was taped in place for now as we test fit the helmet. And my job is done! I had a lot of fun helping out with Jamie's Samus costume. I've only done a handful of 3D printing projects, so this was really good practice for me. I hope this video gave you some ideas on how to clean up and finish 3D prints. Every 3D printer takes some time to get used to, and I'd like to try another large build with a Zortrax M300. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but I have a lot of different filaments left to try. Thank you for watching this build and make sure to subscribe to the Punish Props Academy channel. I have a lot of cool projects coming out in the future and I'm really excited to share them with you.